In this video, we will look at sentinel controlled while loops. A sentinel controlled loop syntax is useful to, to implement a loop that we do not know how many times it's going to execute. All right, a sentinel controlled loop. Here I have listed the four kind of steps to build a good loop where we initialize our condition variables, we test a condition. If the condition is true, we do some work and then we update our condition variables and then test again. For a sentinel controlled loop, we can set up the loop as follows. What we're going to do first is have some test value and some exit condition um, initialized. Now the test value is going to be our conditional variable. Depending on the value of the test value variable, uh, that will determine whether we loop or not then our loop condition is that the test value is not equal to the exit condition. As long as the, the value we are testing is not the exit value, then we are going to do the work, get the next test value, and then check to see if the next test value is the exit condition or not. Now this is just a pattern, okay? So we can model anywhere, anytime you have a loop that you do not know how many times it needs to loop, we can model it using this pattern. So we're going to look at a couple examples. So for my first example here, I am saying prompt the user to enter in a password. Keep prompting as long as the password is not EZ123. So I want to keep doing a bit of work until some condition is reached. The user enters a valid password. This falls into the Sentinel control loop pattern because the user might enter the correct password on the first go uh, and or they might take them 100 times or they may never get it. So we do not know how many times we need to loop. Uh, and in that, for that reason, we can use a sentinel controlled loop pattern. So let's try this out. In this example, I'm going to build the loop condition first. So we want to keep looping while some password value is not equal to the exit condition EZ123. So this loop condition here is, is setting up wh when, what under what condition do I want to keep looping? I want to keep looping when the password is incorrect. All right. So I have, if I'm labeling my four steps to build a good loop, this is step two, build the condition. Now here, password is my conditional variable. The, va the value of password will determine whether we keep looping or whether we are done looping. So let's initialize this password variable. And I can initialize that. Here we are saying we want the password through a prompt. So let's build a prompt. So I'm going to say initialize conditional variable. I'm going to make a string variable for password prompt the user, console.write, enter the password, and then read in the result into my password variable. All right, so we've gotten an initial password. Now we can test. If the user entered in easy123 right off the bat, then when we check this condition, easy123 not equal to easy123 will be false. When our loop condition is false, we skip the body and just continue on with our code. If the user entered an invalid password, then this condition will be, this expression will be true and I'm gonna execute the code block and then recheck the condition. So let's build the condition if the password is bad. The work we're gonna do is tell the user to try again. So I'm gonna say console.writeline invalid password, try again. And now we must update the conditional variable. The update usually takes place at the very end of our loop block, code block. And we want it to update at the very end because when we go back and check, I want to check the last value, the, the new updated value against the exit condition. So since we initialized our password through a prompt, I'm going to get the next password through a prompt. So invalid password, try again. Let's go ahead and stick a new line character before our next prompt and we'll test it out. OK, 
Here we have our four steps for building a good loop. So I believe this is going to be a good loop. All right. We have our initial prompt, enter a password. If I say easy one, two, three on the first try, we skip the while loop body and we just get to the end of our program. So let's test under some bad conditions. Here I'm going to enter easy one, two, two. That's incorrect. Easy one, two, one, incorrect. And as many times as I enter an incorrect password, we are stuck in the loop until I enter the correct password and we exit the loop. Let's look at a second example here. In this example, we're going to look at creating a prompt, a protected numeric prompt that keeps prompting the user to enter in numeric values until they enter a correct numeric value. Now we've seen in previous videos that we can protect a numeric prompt using the try parse. And the try parse returns a Boolean value. It returns the Boolean value true if the parse is successful, the Boolean value false if the parse is not successful. So let's think under what condition do we want to keep looping here? Well, first of all, it, I do not know, if I tell the user to enter in a number, I do not know how many times it's going to take them to enter in a correct number. So this falls into the sentinel controlled loop pattern. I want to keep looping while the user enters bad values. I want to keep telling them to try again, try to enter a good value if they enter bad values. I know they've entered a bad value if when I call the try parse method, the try parse returns a false value. Or if I want to fit it into the conditional variable is not equal to an exit condition, the exit condition would be a true parse. A good parse is when we want to stop looping. So when I build my loop condition, maybe I could say while the parse, I'll call it parse OK, is not equal to true, that's the condition I want to keep looping under. Or in other words, while the parse is not good. Keep looping. So this is step two build the loop condition. Now, how do I initialize my parse value here? Well, I can do that through a protected prompt. So let's do that. So we're going to initialize conditional variables. And we're going to, I'm going to have two variables here. First, we're going to enter in a, a, a numeric value. Let's prompt the user to enter in their age. So I'm going to say int age. And then I'm going to create a Boolean variable called parse OK, which will hold the result of whether the user input can be parsed or not. So let's prompt the user to enter their age. Please enter your age. I'm going to put a new line character at the beginning to separate it from the example above. And then I'm going to use my try parse syntax. So parse OK is equal to int.tryparse console.readline, put the output into my age variable. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call the console.readline, which reads in the user input. I'm going to try to parse that string value that the user entered into the numeric variable age. If the parse succeeds, then age will have the number representation of what the user entered, and the method will return a true into the parse OK variable. If that parse fails, then age will get the value 0 by default, and parse OK will get a false, the value false. So if the parse OK is not equal to true, or if it, if it is false, then what is the work we need to do? We need to reprompt. Reprompt for a new numeric value. So maybe I will say console.writeLine invalid number entered and then four is our update we want to get the next parse okay to get the next parse okay I need to do the next prompt so I'm going to copy my initialization prompt and put in my uh, reprompt here so we have our four steps to building a good loop I think this is going to work so we'll get past our first loop by entering in easy one, two, three. 
Now we are entering in ages. So if the, if the user enters in a in, an invalid age, I can't parse ASDF into an integer. So we're trying again. What if the user enters in a decimal or a, a double value? Well, I can't parse a double into an integer. So we're trying again. And now if I enter in a valid value, we have gotten outside the loop. So these are examples of when you have a loop that you do not know how many times it's going to execute, we can use set up our loop using the sentinel controlled loop pattern. And that pattern is where a some test value is not equal to an exit condition. Keep doing the work.